Our week started on Thursday with the handing down of the mini budget, which we knew was going to be a doozy. In fact, our COVID budget was even displaying COVID symptoms. You're going to see eye-watering numbers. The numbers will be eye-watering. 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 I think I use the term butt clenching. I'm no economist, but if your eyes are watering and your butt is clenching, it's not a good thing. Unless that is your thing, in which case, all power to you. Anyway, I'm sure the numbers aren't that bad. Last year, the Coalition promised there would be a budget surplus this year, no matter what, as clarified by ABC psychic Lee Sales. Like any projection, your ability to deliver that $7 billion surplus is reliant on factors that are outside your control. It might not happen. No, it will happen. Ooh, I think my butt just clenched. OK, let's hear the mini-budget numbers. Oh, but first, I am a little bit parched, so I'm just going to take a big sip from my mug. Mm -hmm. Australia is facing its biggest budget deficit since World War II. The deficit was $65 billion, and that is likely to be closer to $100 billion in the past financial year and $200 billion in this one. Oh. I know, I'm not surprised by the numbers. No, I just got the wrong mug. This is the mug I pee in. We've been locked in this studio for months. I meant to drink from, ah, this mug. Look, following a crisis, debt is fine, as long as you can pay it back. Which brings us to Friday, when Josh Frydenberg declared that if the economy is rooted, maybe you should be too. With Australia's population growth set to fall to a 100-year low, the Treasurer has endorsed a baby boom. The more children um, that we have across the country will build our population growth and that will be good for the economy. Wow, that's the first time I've heard a Liberal Treasurer say Labor could pay back the debt. But given the state of the world, how do you encourage people to bring a child into it? I think the best thing that we can do uh, uh, to, uh, to encourage uh, more children being born across the country is obviously to create a strong economy for them to be born into. Mm, that is right. We need to have babies to make the economy good enough for us to have babies to fix the economy. And what an offer to the women of Australia. Sure, already you lost your job and you won't be receiving assistance. Now we need you to use your womb as a perpetual motion machine that powers our entire economy. Oh, and that reminds me, uh, find a job and get back to work because you're going to need to pay for childcare. While COVID numbers are still stubbornly high, on the first weekend of mandatory masking, nothing was going to stop Melburnians from being Melburnians. The morning juggle in Melbourne, a coffee with a side of face mask. Like Melbourne's coronavirus outbreak, that coffee has a single origin. But while eating and drinking without a mask on is legal, uh, not to mention necessary to live, some took a stand against masks altogether. The woman refused to wear a mask while shopping at Bunnings. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Beg your pardon? Sorry, I'm just asking if you've got a mask. Well, it's clear I don't. And you are not authorised to ask me or question me about it. It should be easy. If you don't want to wear a mask at Bunnings, don't go to Bunnings. But then again, what could be more in keeping with the spirit of Bunnings than thinking that you know more than the experts, even though you can't follow simple instructions? It's a condition of entry of our store. As a then that's discrimination, and I can have you sued personally for discriminating against me as a woman. We're not discriminating against anyone. You are. It is in breach of the 1948 Charter of Human Rights to discriminate against men and women. Fun fact, uh, the 1948 Declaration of Human Rights does not apply under Australian law, uh, which means it definitely doesn't apply under the lawless free-for-all of Bunnings. In fact, if you have your uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights handy, uh, probably the most useful thing you can do with it is to um, turn it into a mask. Uh, and now you can go to Bunnings. Oh, and if you can find a better declaration of human rights, they'll beat it by 10%. In South Australia, an expenses scandal has forced a cabinet reshuffle as four senior members step down from their posts, including Minister for Transport, Stefan Canole. So what did this knucklehead do? Stefan Canole and Tim Whetstone are wrongly claimed an accommodation allowance, which is for country-based MPs when they live 75 kilometres away from Adelaide. Mr Canole was claiming that $234 per day allowance whilst staying at his parents' home in Adelaide. He's paid back around $30,000. He's also said he pays board to his parents, but those details are also unknown. You know, for $234 $34 a day, I'd move back in with my parents too. Uh, but then again, they are lovely people and their backyard has a swing. 
So what were these expenses? Did his parents make him pay for his canon flakes or special canoe? Tell us, Canolsey. The people have a right to canoe. What expenditure did you incur when you stayed at your mum and dad's? Well, David, I do incur a range of expenses uh, in relation to my accommodation. Approach, Can you just explain uh, what expenses to... did you incur at your mum and dad's? Well, again, David, I incur a range of expenses uh, in relation to my... Well, it won't be hard to name some, then. Again, David, can I really rate that I do incur uh, actual expenses? Okay, a range period. of expenses. N name three. Uh, sorry, David, again, I can only reiterate that I do incur uh, actual expenses. Can you please give us an example? Please, just one example of the expenses you incur while staying at the parents. Again, there are a range of expenses that we as MPs... Well, I'll give him this. He certainly has a knack for being an evasive canunt. To Tuesday, and like COVID itself, it seemed that mask-free conspiracy theorists were rapidly spreading as a second wave of Bunnings copy Karens went viral. And there's only one place for dangerous idiots in this country, a guest spot on the Today Show. Lizzie joins us now from Melbourne. Lizzie, good morning to you. All people are asking is for people to wear a mask. Help us understand um, why this is such a problem for you. I only started filming to protect myself because of what, uh, what happened when I was surrounded by staff in Buddings. And despite the virus, in my opinion, yes, being very real, I've never said it's not real, it was orchestrated. And the level, the amount of effect that it's had the, it is not true. The statistics aren't true, despite, you know, the virus being, I believe, biochemically engineered yes. intentionally. Having given Lizzie a few minutes to run her unmasked mouth, the Today Show tried an innovative approach and questioned its own guests' credentials. How do you know it's COVID? Why is it that everybody that is dying this year diagnosed. in 2020 is What was is your medical degree again? Death? Sorry? I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but I worked as a medic, OK? And I did, obviously, uh, quite a while ago, not when COVID was around. When did you work as a medic? But I'm telling you right now, the statistics are wrong. When did you work as a uh, medic? Last time was about four years ago. Because I've got here that you're a professional psychic. It was about four psychic. years ago last time. Are you a medic or a psychic? Wow, you'd think a psychic would have seen that coming. Frustrated, Carl made like a Bunnings staff member in aisle 21 and showed her the door. You know okay. what, I can't so even my, listen to you anymore. Can I'm I so just sorry. put it to you, Carl? I can't even listen to you. I, can, I can't put it to you. You can't listen to me. Nah. That my, I have a medical exemption. Nah, it's, it's wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, it's OK, Carlos. Turn that frown upside down. I mean, how could you know that the person your show researched, booked and put on air specifically to create a stunt like this would have created a stunt like this? After all, unlike your guests, you're not a psychic. And now to my favourite story of the week. As we go to air tonight, Clive Palmer finds himself in the perilous position of fighting two very different court battles. One to be allowed back into Western Australia and the other to do with election ads featuring this delightful parody of Twisted Sisters, We're Not Gonna Take It. Australia ain't gonna cop it. No, Australia's not gonna cop it. Ours is not gonna cop it anymore. Nah, it's good stuff. Proving that while you can annoy some of the people some of the time, you can also annoy all of the people all of the time. Clive has refused to pay a licence fee for the song, ironically just taking it, which has caused a public spat with the band's lead singer, Dee Snyder. Clive is running a brilliant defence in court that he first previewed on Twitter. Clive Palmer is not backing down <coughs> as Twisted Sister slam him for using their song on his adverts. Uh, have a look at these tweets now. He should be careful about pointing the finger at people because the song he is apparently so protective of was not an original work of his, rather a rip-off of the centuries-old Christmas carol, O oh, Come All Ye Faithful. You know, that actually is a great point. I mean, once he said it, you, you can totally hear it. O oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, Jesus something something in a barn. Yeah! Case dismissed. And that's the week.